these reforms are the necessary foundation for any particular economic strategies. Many of these reforms will take time. Educational reform is the work of many years, but that is no excuse not to start. Confidence will return immediately if that start is bold. As for particular economic strategies, there are many we can pursue. We need to tap our advantage in having a high savings rate. Thanks to a lot of forced savings, our savings rate is about 38%. We need more productive users for the massive funds held in EPF, Lembaga Tabung Haji, Lembaga Tabung Angkatan Tentera and PNB, then investment in an already overcapitalized stock market. One suggestion is to make strategic investments internationally in broad growth sectors such as minerals. Another is that we should use these funds to enable every Malaysian to own their own house. This would stimulate the construction sector with its large multiplier of activities and bring about a stakeholder society. A fine example of how this is done is Singapore's use of savings in CPF. James Puticherry was one time chairman of CPF Singapore to fund property purchases. The government could make sure that the land office and local government, developers and house buyers are coordinated through a one-stop agency under the Ministry of Local Government and Housing. This will get everyone active, right down to the level of local authorities. The keys to unleashing this activity are financing and a radical streamlining of government approvals, local government approvals. We have been living off a drip of oil and cheap foreign, la foreign labor. Dependence on these easy sources of revenue has dulled our competitiveness and prevented the growth of high income jobs. We need a moratorium on the hiring of low skilled foreign labor that is paired with a very aggressive effort to increase the productivity and wages of Malaysian labor. Higher wages would mean we could retain more of our skilled labor and our other talent. Five years ago, I called for a project to make Malaysia an oil and gas services and trading hub for East Asia. Oil and gas activities will bring jobs to some of our poorer states. We should not discriminate against those states on the basis of their political affiliations. No one is better placed by natural advantage to develop this hub. Meanwhile, Singapore, with not a drop of oil, has moved ahead on this front. We should ready ourselves to tap the wealth of the emerging middle class of China, India and Indonesia in providing services such as tourism, medical care and education. That readiness can come in the form of streamlined procedures, language preparation and targeted infrastructure development. These are just some ideas for some of the many things we could do to ensure our prosperity. Others may have better ideas. We are in a foundational crisis of our political system. People can no longer, no longer see what lies ahead of us. And all around us, they see signs of decaying institutions. Wealth and talent will continue to leave the country in droves. To reverse that exodus, we need to restore confidence in the country. We do not get confidence back with piecemeal economic measures, but with bold reforms to restore transparency, accountability, and legitimacy to our institutions. Confidence will return if people see decisive leadership motivated by a sincere programs for the welfare of the country. The opposite occurs if they see decisions motivated by short-term politics. Never mind FDI. If Malaysians started investing in Malaysia and stopped leaving or started coming back, we would see a surge in growth. 
In the same measure, we also need to break the stranglehold of communal politics and racial policy if we want to be a place where an economy driven by ideas and skills can flourish. This must be done, and it must be done now. We have a small window left before we fall into a spiral of political, social, and economic decline, from which we will not emerge for decades. This is the leap we need to make. But to make that leap, we need a government capable of promoting radical reform. That is not going to happen without political change. We should not underestimate the ability of our citizens to transcend lies, distortions and myths and get behind the best interests of the country. In this, they are far ahead of our present leadership and our leadership should listen to them.